was Joseph Marcelli, and he immigrated here with a lot of other miners from Italy and over 32 other countries. They came here looking for a better life. Okay, Nelly, uh, let's take a little break. Coming to America, it was a good thing I did. Even so, it was hard. So many, Mom, Papa, Giuseppe, Emilia, they are still in Sicily. I'm afraid I will never see them again. But my darling Maria and the bambinos, they won't have to live the way we did there. Back home, we work all day in the fields, in the hot, hot sun. The bosses, the gabellotti, stood over us with guns, and each harvest, they cheated us out of the grain we grew. And when the wheat prices went down, we starved. They treated us like animals, worse than animals. But here, in America, it's good. So what if I have to buy my own tools and cap light? Eh, the work, eh, she is steady. The mind, she is cool and safe. You see to that, eh, don't you, cantante? As long as I can hear your song, I know I'm safe. Hey, Georgia, did your lights go out too? Not to worry, my young friend. You see, they are back now already. Oh yes, light is good. Lynch will be the first man with electric all the time. What do you say we have lunch together, Joseph? I'll come out to you, okay? See, maybe there will be some lasagna from Maria for you. Once you have tasted Italian cooking, you will dream of nothing else. Life is good. Me, Joseph Margelli and mia familia. We have a house with electric lights. My bambinos, Tony and Mario, their stomachs are full. They won't have to do what I did. To leave home at 12 so the others could have enough to eat. Fire in the hole! See, life is bellissimo. As long as I am careful and shore up the roof so it doesn't cave in. Fire in the hole! And watch my blasts so all goes well. I hope to work here a long time and maybe save enough money to bring over my brothers and sisters. Fire in the hole! Easy, Calmare. It's all right. Aren't you used to that noise yet? So he can use the side doors to hold his sandwiches. Yeah, okay. I bet he and the guy rents got real friendly. Tell me here tells me that you're gonna show us the ropes. Eh, this is true. Soon you will know this mine like at the street you live on. Now, eh, let me show you the four basic steps. And Tony, eh, what is the first one? Sound on the roof. You treat it with respect. Always. Especially when you get to a new spot. Did you hear that tapping sound as we were coming down here? That was me sounding the roof. I was showing Henry here how to do it. How did you show him? Like this. And how you use your free hand to feel for any vibrations. And if you feel a vibration, or if you hear a hollow sound, then you've got a roof that might give on you. 
You've got to brace that up before you do anything else. Yeah. I tried a few times to try to get the hang of it. It seems like a mighty important skill to have. Oh, you bet. The roof, she is important. You should have seen a former loy last week when they carried them out. He had gone into an empty tunnel to eat his lunch, and the roof fell in on him and broke his collarbone. Now his six kids will be hungry for a while. You boys must always remember respect in the mind. So, when the roof is good, I mean, Sam, then what? Then you make an umbar cut with the cutting machine. And after you make the undercut, you come along and drill several holes with the drill like Pop has been doing. Then you put in the charge? That's right. And make sure you got plenty of cord and step back plenty far away and let her rip. That's right. Fire the And after that, it's just a matter of putting the coal into the cars. And you must always remember to fill them full. O'Toole Sam. O'Toole's hump. O'Toole was the first mine superintendent here. And he didn't consider a car full until not another piece would sit on top. And that's why they call it O'Toole's hump. hump. So, were you part of that group that made the world record in 23? We mined them more coal here in one day than anyone had ever mined anywhere else in the world. There were over 1,500 people on payroll that day, and they mined 7,089 tons of coal. That's 4.8 tons per person. And they said that the train that carried all that away was over one and a half mile long. Oh yes, here at Porto 31, we know how to mine the coal. You too will become good miner. A lot of miners like Tony and Henry came and went through this river. Times got pretty tough in the 30s. It was the Great Depression. It was the worst in 1932. We might only work two days and two weeks. But U.S. Steel gave us credit at the company store, the United Supply Company. And we all grew gardens. I think I heard there were 900 of them. So we survived, and finally, the mining picked up. The 30s were hard in other ways, too. At the time, there was a lot of union organizing going on down here. But U.S. Steel wanted to keep the union out of reach. If you tried to join, they'd likely throw you out of town. But the organizers kept coming right back. stop is 1943. Lots of things have changed. For one thing, there's a war, and everyone is reaching in to help the war effort. You can hear the change. It's much noisier. The equipment is bigger, and there's a lot more of it. Underground telephones, roof bolters, coal haulers, and the latest mining innovation, the conveyor belt. Also, miners don't work alone. Old-timers like Joseph now work in crews, and several crews now work for a foreman. But safety is still our number one concern. That's what you're going to see first. Men measuring the airflow and roof bolting, part of the safety precautions that are now an everyday part of mining. You'll see what I mean. There, Ben. Hold it there. Okay. I got my side braced. You get yours. Got it. Now let's test it. Hiram, how's the airflow? Oh, let me see. Looks good. I think that did. That should be the last one we need in this section. This bladder's in the new fan should bring in enough air for the new tunnel. Man, this mine's getting big. Hope we can get the air back far enough. We can do it. We always have before. Yeah, this mine just keeps growing. It opened because they needed coal to make steel for the First World War. Now they've got us working seven days a week to get enough fuel for this World War. You ever think about that? I'm mostly just thinking about putting my pillow under my head. <laughs> you done over there, Bill?
can you help me with Sergey here? I'm trying to talk some sense into him. The knucklehead won't admit that joining the union has been a good thing. Ever since we signed with the United Mine Workers in 37, we've had better, safer working conditions, not to mention better pay. Yeah, when you are working. We had six strikes this year. I don't call being out of work. On strike wages, good pay. But now we got a chance of moving up. Before the union, there was no way management was going to let a colored man do anything but junk work. But with the union, I've got a chance. If I can do the job, I can make a better way. Hey, he's got a point, sir. The union lets us have a say in how things run. And with this war going on, we all need to be tuned. Do what we can. Did you hear the latest number? Four thirty one is down about a thousand men since last year. Don't we know it? That's less than three thousand of us now. And more are leaving to join every day. You know Billy Marzella, Joseph's grandson. The minute he got out of high school, he signed up. He's on his way to the Pacific right now. You know, I thought about it myself, but I'm 38, just too old. Not too old, man. The reason they won't let you join is because you've been a miner so long. They need you here in the mines. Somebody's got to provide the fuel for the factories so we can win this war. That's our job. That one will hold for sure. It felt pretty solid. Hey, those steel bolts will last forever. Yeah, this is a lot better than the old post and pin method. Can you remember how hard it was to set those posts by yourself? Oh man, what a backbreaker. But with these roof bolts, unless there's a mountain bump, they'll hold a lot of weight. And we'll have a lot fewer roof holes. So, sir, you think we can set three more before lunch? I am game if you are. Roof falls have always been a major cause of death and injury. These new roof bolts are steel. They work like the type of bolts you might use around the house. You drill them in and as you pull the drill out, they'll spread out and hold the roof. They make the job a whole lot safer. See you tonight at the game? I'll be there. I want to see that new picture they got from Gary. I hear he's something. Boy, do we need it. It's about time somebody showed over the good on. Then it'll be those three games running. You better believe we're going to break that streak. You got that right. You know these nine hours shifts are great. Now we've got time to do stuff. Like go to baseball games. Uh, unless you're also stuck in the night shift. But well, we won't have double shifts forever, not once the law's open. Yeah, thanks to the union. The company never would have been on its own. Shorter days, hospitalization. The good old UMW, they sure made it happen. So, Clay, how do you like these new secret prevails? They sure be the hand rolling. You say that again. They're slicker than breeze lightning. They really get the job done fast. They make it kind of like a factory, don't they? Just moving the coal along. All we got to do is load it up. And keep her fed. Hey, you folks have got to back up. We've got to get these cars out of here. Don't you know there's a schedule to keep? <laughs> We've got to help win this war. strike last year? No, but I have a feeling you're going to tell me. 64. 64 days I could have been making money. I don't know how much longer I'm going to stay here. I think I just might join my brother and his family up in Detroit. The work's steadier there. They have unions up there too. But there's a war on. You really think we should be stopping work to go on strike? Good point. By the way, I heard your little brother was thinking about enlisting. 
Bobby, he's been talking about it a bunch. He's thinking about trying to qualify for sharpshooter. He'd be good at it too, all the squirrel hunting he's done. Fact was, lots of miners weren't allowed to enlist during World War II. Mining was a protected industry. That meant you were exempt from the draft and your skills were needed for the war effort at home. But after November of 43, unions weren't allowed to strike. But the Iggy's Lewis Agreement gave miners some benefits, like a nine hour portal to portal day. And it required the company, not the miner, to pay for tools, blacksmithing, lights, and other fringe benefits. But remember, the agreement also stated that because of the war, no strikes were allowed. It remained in effect until August 1945. Especially heavy duty industrial machines, maintenance is critical. And that's what's happening here. Two men changing the cutting bits on a continuous miner. I think that's got it. I sure hope McGrady learns how to stay on the top. He hits so much rock, he's wearing down these bits something fierce. You'd think he would have learned that by now. Oh well, old dogs and new tricks. Boy, oh boy, Jim, I'm beat. Am I ever glad this shit's almost over? By the way, I heard somebody at lunch say that maybe we're done with continuous miner in this section. That's right, Billy. This section's pretty well mined out, so we're going to move it to number three heading tomorrow. You know, my daddy and granddaddy first mined these sections, and now we're pulling the pillars out. I'm a third generation coal miner, and all together we've seen lots of changes here. My grandpa Joseph mined by hand with a pony team. My dad and his brother mainly worked conventional mining. But by the time I started, it was machines like this one that did most of the work. And it seems like they just keep getting bigger and better. And it's our job to keep them running. There's been other changes too. Yeah, like the pay. In 1918, when Grandpa Joseph started here, he got paid less than 50 cents for each ton that he mined. By the time he died in 47, miners were being paid hourly. I think it was about $1.60 per hour. Joseph died of black lung, didn't he? You know, he worked in the coal mines for 30 years. Most of that time, they didn't know what breathing coal dust could do to you. Yeah, a lot of miners got black lung, and we owe a lot to those guys. You bet we do. Oh well, our shift's over. The crew in the next tunnel will be up and running any minute now. Time to get going. Matter of fact, that sound you hear now is the continuous miner at work in the next time. It's pretty noisy, so be ready. But don't worry.
that new Star Wars movie. This isn't the end of our story, but rather the beginning. The mountain itself has a story to tell. A very old story. One that takes us back to a time before the mountains were here. Back to the very beginnings of our planet. Then, there were no continents, no oceans. The young planet was a sea of molten rock, intense heat, and violent upheaval. But as it began to cool, it also began to rain and much of the Earth's surface was covered by shallow seas. Life, as we know it, began. Slowly, over millions of years, vast swamps grew out of the seas, and then giant forests of mosses and ferns, all competing for life. Plants and animals lived and died, sinking to the bottom of the swamps. They carried with them stored energy from sunlight, now held captive in this decaying matter, buried in mud and sand, layer upon layer, year after year, for millions of years. But the Earth was still young. Land masses were still forming, ever changing. The sand and mud moved and shifted, and as more layers were added, their immense weight created enormous pressure on the underlying deposits, which over time formed various types of rock, as well as other formations, some energy-rich in composition. Huge pockets of natural gas, vast deposits of oil, and countless seams of coal. This mountain, Black Mountain, is part of the Appalachian Mountain Range, one of the oldest in the world. These mountains were formed as the ever-shifting continental shelves of what are now known as Europe and Africa collided with North America. The unimaginable pressure created along fault lines caused land masses to shift up and slide, one over the other, and as a result, Mountain ranges were born. Black Mountain was born, reaching for the sky. So what was once beneath the swamplands now surrounds us. The tunnel we are now in once held a rich seam of high-grade gold. Time passed. Millions upon millions of years. The Earth continued to evolve. Millions of species of plants and animals evolved as well. And man, with the abilities of reasoning and conscious thought, would begin to relate to the world around him. For thousands of years, mankind would use what was on the Earth for food, shelter, and fuel. But with the birth of the industrial age came the need for new sources of energy. A need that would inevitably lead us to search under the ground. To places where vast energy resources have been stored through the millennia. search for coal would eventually lead here, to this place in the Cumberland Valley, to Black Mountain, the source of a multitude of high-grade coal veins reaching from here to West Virginia. A search 
where the vast human resources needed to mine the coal would begin as well. Adventurous men, who would be a match for the mountain, who possessed the courage and physical toughness required to explore the ancient depths of Black Mountain in the search for coal. Beginning in 1917, this area would become home to thousands of miners and their families. The first to come were native to the region, men who were already familiar with the challenges of life in the mountains of eastern Kentucky. Of these, many were also veterans of the First World War. Soon, thousands more would emigrate to Black Mountain from 37 countries, from continents around the world. Those same continents that were formed when the earth was young, when the Appalachians first rose to the sky. They built a town and created a community. And for much of the 20th century, they lived their lives and worked here on this mountain. A mountain that would yield over 80 million tons of coal by the middle of the century. For some miners, Portal 31 was the portal to a new country and a new way of life. For others, it was the portal to prosperity, raising their children and grandchildren, some becoming miners themselves, some seeking other opportunities in the Cumberland area and in the cities beyond. But wherever life may lead them, they carry the legacy of pride and perseverance that was earned through generations of hard work and mental toughness. in the world. And in 1923, the miners set a world's record for coal tonnage mined in one day. A lot of strong, brave, and hard-working men spent the better part of their lives in this mine. And it's been nice to have had the opportunity to share a part of their story with you today. The Kentucky Coal Museum and Mine Tour is a tribute to their efforts. And now let's just sit back and enjoy the ride back to the portal. You know, sometimes when I listen real close, I feel like I can hear the mind speaking to me. Or maybe it's just a whisper of the thousands and thousands of stories that the miners shared with each other as they made their way into and out of the mine. Can you hear it too? Don't the lights on or off going out? Don't matter to me. It's up to you. You turn them on.
first way you can. The usual, just going to take it easy. Why? Well, a bunch of us single guys are going to head up to Louisville on Saturday. Hey, really, brother, you're going to play at the fairground. No kidding. Man, I love those guys. You know, there's going to be good looking girls screaming all over the place. Now, me and What time are we leaving? I'm going to pick them up after lunch. We're going to have some time to finish sports streets in the kitchen. Aces, man. Set. I'll be ready.
Well, anyway, he dropped in Jamal in the field. He got, he told me, basically, come.